Jane Barden, what exactly has led to Natasha Files resigning today? Well, Natasha Files has become embroiled in a row which is over a number of shareholdings that she has. Um, it's emerged a month ago that she had shareholdings in Woodside, which is um, one of the proponents of having a carbon capture and storage hub at a big gas development called the Middle Arm Development on Darwin Harbour. Then it emerged that one of her political advisers, Jared Richardson, was a lobbyist for Tamboran, the gas company that wants to supply the gas export hub from the NT's big Beetaloo Basin. And then just this week it emerged that she also had shares in a company called South 32, which has the Gemco mine on Groot Island. And earlier on in this year, in March, Natasha Files, as health minister, had refused to start an investigation into deep community concerns about dust from that mine, coating the Anurugu community of indigenous people beside the mine. And so it was felt and accused by the opposition that she'd had conflicts of interest in all those situations that she hadn't dic disclosed and she hadn't disclosed that she had the shares in these companies on the share register. So it's a bit weird, isn't it? Because Natasha Files has been pushing this middle arm development very aggressively. Um, the sort of bread and butter political issue up in the territory has really been crime. She probably was as surprised as everybody else that this was the issue that's brought her undone. I think she certainly would be because during the initial stages of this row, she's basically stood her ground and said, nothing to see here. Um, I got those shares from my granny as a present and I just didn't um, check when I was a young person uh, and when I became elected that I still had those shares. So really, um, Labour has been more on the nose over its inability to tackle rising crime statistics, problems in the health service. And so I think this has come out of the blue for the Chief Minister that uh, this perceived conflict of interest over these shares would really blow up to be such a big issue because she really has vociferously defended these gas projects and uh, the mines in the territory as being essential for growing the prosperity of this place. Middle Arm in particular also has national implications. The federal government has already given $1.5 billion to support it and there's lobbying for another $2 billion. Could there be some federal fallout or even implications for the project, given the Greens have signalled today they may call Natasha Files before a Senate inquiry into Middle Arm? Yes, the Greens already have a Senate inquiry into the middle arm and so they're going to really use this and other critics like David Pocock to really start questioning the federal government again on how they can possibly put $1.5 billion into a fossil fuel project given that Chris Bowen has just been at the COP uh, climate summit. And so they'll really use this to say, you know, uh, not only are we giving the 1.5 billion, but the Northern Territory is now asking for another 2 billion for a carbon capture and storage project, when really the evidence about whether these projects can work at scale in Australia is unproven. So um, that's going to be a hugely controversial issue, and the federal government is going to be having to answer a lot more questions about that, particularly because the Chief Minister has chosen to fall on her sword partly over that issue. So what happens next, Jane? Who's likely to take over? And how does this affect their prospects at the next year's election? Nicole Madison, the mining minister, has put her hand up publicly. But um, some other uh, more less experienced members of the caucus are believed to be also interested in that position. But Labour will be petrified in the territory of, again, looking like an unstable government. They've only just had a reshuffle, um, deposing the Environment Minister, possibly seen to be too green, and removing the Agriculture Minister, who hasn't defended water use claims well. So um, Labour will be going into next year's election year feeling very vulnerable because it still hasn't found any um, particular solutions to rising crime, problems in the health system, and uh, the CLP are capitalising big time in this. And um, Labour has also had some defections uh, to the independent benches, so they're going to be very worried going into this election year next year. Jane Barden, thanks so much for your time tonight. Thank you.